Hello, it's me. Uh, I, uh, this is my second video. I wanted to show you where I'm sitting first before I explain the background noise, because now I guess you can probably understand what, what that noise is. It's a waterfall. It's, uh, it's a little creek, um, a little river, I guess. Um, I would call it a creek because I'm, I'm from Appalachia, but uh, um, you know, they, they actually call it a river here because in Luxembourg they, they name all of the really tiny streams. Uh, this one's called the, oh, I think it was the Alizette or something. And it's really tiny, um, but it's cool. And um, yeah, so this is the second video I'm making for you folks. Uh, I appreciate you watching these. In the first video, last week's video, I, I was talking about spring and how I really wanted it to be spring and, you know, the way you kind of like sort of try to rush stuff and then it just, you know, can't be rushed. But out of nowhere, it's it's not even really spring, it's kind of summer here. <laughs> it's weird. It's great um, sitting in the sun. Uh, actually, the last hour and a half I was uh, laying uh, by this big fallen tree. <clears throat> Excuse me, laying by this big fallen tree uh, just in my boxers to get sun. So I'm already starting to get tan. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so so as I said, you know, I'm going to show you cool places. I'm probably going to show you this place again because it's so far my favorite uh, that I found around here. Um, I hope you're well. Um, I, I know things are really super stressful in the world right now. Uh, you know, with like coronavirus and then the way some politicians are getting kind of a little, well, and some police officers are kind of getting over the top in some places about that. Um, in these videos, you know, I, I like to talk about personal things and not so much political stuff, but there's, there's one thing that kind of intersects a little bit. Um, you know, as you know, I, I'm a druid. I've studied druidry for a while. Um, that I think, you know, I guess I can also call, ow, sorry, uh, Blackthorn. Let me move a bit. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, but, uh, you know, so Druidry kind of really explains the framework that, you know, how I look at the world. And there's this thing with the kind of coronavirus, the, you know, COVID-19, et cetera, that, you know, you sometimes hear people saying this, but it's sort of an old argument that's kind of come up, you know, people who just kind of get really dismissive of, of you know, political stuff in general, but definitely see that there's a problem to say, well, you know, humans are a disease or we're a cancer on the earth. And, uh, you know, COVID-19 is kind of like a, you know, manifestation of that cancer or whatever. And that argument is 95% wrong. Um, but there is a little bit of truth to that. So, first of all, you, you know, you, you, you probably know this, that there's always the issue, the, the question of population, um, you know, and whether or not uh, there are too many humans on the earth. And almost every single time you hear someone say it, they probably coming from kind of a racist place or, you know, you ask, you kind of poke at their solutions after that. and. They usually start saying, oh yeah, we, you know, there are too many people in Africa. And it's like, hey, actually, the majority of people who are using most of the resources live in the quote-unquote first world, in the Western democratic nations, um, especially the United States. So if you're going to start reducing population, maybe you should start with those people. But I don't think we need to start reducing population at all. But, yeah. So, so we know that the virus is, 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 you know, or we're pretty certain it, it came from, um, or, you know, through a wet market, um, but it originally came in animals and it jumped to humans. This is, this is the thing that happens all of the time. Um, I'm trying to think, one of the most famous examples, I, I think syphilis, the syphilis or gonorrhea, one of those two um, started as a disease in, or uh, a virus in sheep. Uh, or infection in sheep, not in humans, and it jumped from sheep to human. Um, yeah, this this kind of happens all the time. That's just how viruses work. They, they they hang around, they infect things, and then they change, and then they infect more things. Um, in a way, though, 
in a way though you can also say that the industrial civilization you know our overreach as it were has kind of accelerated that process you know as we keep kind of going into um, more distant places into more wild places or the few wild places that are left you know we start encountering more more diseases more infections etc Ebola was one of those things that, that kind of jumped very quickly um, because of deforestation and because of the, the change in the uh, resource availability for Africans um, so it's not the Africans fault it, it was the fault of the way that capitalism has been pushing people to you know search further and further and further for for resources for food <coughs> now the the other thing though so you know on one hand yeah you know we we know the system is doing this and that's like the most important thing i think to to kind of talk about but there is also kind of an extent to which uh, you know we have overreached now is that population not necessarily though you know there's this kind of uncomfortable fact that i kind of don't even like looking at but if you're familiar with the green revolution in um the 60s and 70s quote unquote green um it, it wasn't green at all but basically it was it was a bunch of technological advances that happened really quickly um that made it so that our food supply in the world kind of tripled but these are all kind of bad advances i mean when I, on my walk here, I walk by uh, several fields. There's, there's a lot of farming going around here. And if you look at the soil, the soil is pretty much white. But if you look at the soil everywhere else, it's, it's dark brown, you know, the places that they're not farming. But, but this stuff is almost a consistency of sand. And the only reason, the only way that they're able to grow anything in it right now is, to, is by, by, by input of fertilizers like nitrogen, etc. And that is from the Green Revolution. The, the Green Revolution suddenly exploded the amount of food because there was a population crisis at that time um, where everyone was worried, hey, we're running out of food, we're gonna start having famine soon. And then suddenly the scientists came up with this, you know, way to increase food. So, uh, you know, the, the current population that we have is actually a result of the Green Revolution. Um, the, we would have had a lower population because there wouldn't have been enough food so people would have start started making decisions like hey i i can't have a second child because i can barely feed my first child etc um but with that technological explosion suddenly you know suddenly that wasn't a choice people had to make anymore so it was like oh of course there's always food there's always food on the shelves and you know we may or may not be coming to another situation like that but as it is, you know, we have all of these viruses coming up. But as a druid, you know, th there's the the kind of nihilist. Some some people kind of call it ecofascist. Ecofascism isn't that. Ecofascism is, you know, literally Nazis who talk about the environment. But you know, there's the idea that, um, you know, if you say that, uh, you know, there are too many humans or humans are are a cancer or whatever like that. Um, you know, they, they, they put that in together with anybody who kind of makes a critique that's like, hey, you know, we, we've kind of gone a little too far. And I think where that really kind of comes in is when you hear people talk about humans like we're, you know, a virus or a cancer. The better example is we're like a bacteria and bacteria is good. Um, you know, you, you probably know this uh, on your skin, inside your body, everywhere is all of this bacteria. Um, compost happens because of bacteria. There are plants that, that cannot grow without bacteria. Um, and, and, and there are billions of kinds of bacteria and they're all usually pretty well balanced. But when one gets out of balance, when one, you know, either starts expanding or when the other ones are kind of eliminated so there's no more equilibrium, then you start getting really bad problems with bacteria. Um, a, a, another good way of looking at it is, is, is yeast. You know, um, like, uh, you know, yeast exists in your stomach, but if you get a candida infection, um, you, you have an explosion of yeast and then suddenly you can't really digest anything correctly anymore. Uh, but, but these things are necessary and, and I think humans are also necessary for this system. 
Um, the problem is we're out of balance. And what that means, what the solution to that is, I, I don't know. And, and that's not for me to decide. That's for everybody to decide. Um, I, I definitely don't, don't think it should be, you know, violence. Um, yeah, I, I've been thinking about that a lot, especially since I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in this beautiful place. I'll show you again. I kind of want to show you that tree. Oh, there's the tree. Okay, that's the tree. I, I lay on that sometimes now. Um, it's, it's really cool. Um, and yeah, you can see blossoms. Lots of stuff. You know, and, and so I see beautiful places like this, and then I see like how they go away. And they go away because there's, you know, we're out of balance. We, we constantly need more. And there's more of us and each person needs more because we think that, you know, we, we can't do with less. Which, so going back to coronavirus, like the, the, the COVID-19, um, in a way that's kind of a gift. I know people are dying from it. I know it's a really horrible time for everybody right now. But if you look at it kind of, I don't wanna say bright side, but if you look at it as another consequence of what is happening, is that everybody is realizing you can do with less. Um, you know, the rich, the poor, everyone, you know, those who don't really have anything, they're, they're kind of like, oh, okay, well, this is just like my normal life. You know, whereas like the middle classes, et cetera, they're like, oh, well, you know, I, I can't go out to eat. I can't go buy this thing, you know, and then you kind of get to the point where, well, maybe that thing you wanted to buy wasn't necessary. Um, you know, we're realizing what are, what things are necessary, healthcare, food, you know, water, all of those things. But but other things, these, these, these luxuries, these, you know, consumer goods, as it were, we're not buying them. And maybe we'll kind of learn that we don't need them. And if we learn that we don't need them, I think we can get to a point where our, you know, the population of the earth doesn't make any more of a footprint than it did a billion people less. Because a billion people less, like, 10, you know, I think it's 10 years ago that we were a billion less. Um, the, you know, at that point, everyone, you know, no one was even really, really talking about the environment. We were just buying and, and consuming. And so now there's like a billion more people. But if, if everybody were to, you know, stop, stop thinking they need shit, um, you know, we, we could actually get back in balance and, and there wouldn't be a problem with the amount of people that there are. Um, so in a way, like, you know, COVID-19 is a good thing, um, or it can be a good thing if we learn from it. Uh, if not, it could just be a horrible, sad thing. Then, then another thing comes, and another thing comes, and another thing comes, and hopefully we learn or we go extinct. Um, anyway, sorry, I hope that wasn't too depressing, but it, it, feels, it feels okay to talk about stuff like that in a place like this. Again, sorry, one more. I love this place. It's so nice. And I'll show you another flower, or a bunch of flowers. Flowers everywhere. And then the black thorn that kind of got me. And then me again. So, anyway, hey, thanks for watching these. Thank you for your support as well. I definitely appreciate this. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you next week. Be well. Bye.